and the county council cleansing yeah. the party, you know what I mean, like, you know? And besides that, you know, you shouldn't be talking to these, these, these guys at all, you know? If you've got problems in your mind, you should go to confession, not to a television studio, you know? Yeah. But by the way, I'll be hearing confession in the cork machine later on, okay? I'll be there till one o'clock if you want to talk to me at all. Because I'm very up. How are things? Oh, how Ryan, how's it going? <laughs> not too bad. How much of our audience there, I see? Oh, I get that grand young people. Mixing with the people. people. I know you love to do that. Oh, I do. And I think it's great to see them, you know, airing their views. <laughs> This policy, yeah. well, you have a voice, we'll make it heard. That's what we do here. That's great. No, I think so too. Up to a point, I'll agree with you, Brian. You know, because I, I think the proper place for a young person's voice is out in a football pitch, you know, Reckon kicking here. a ball or, you know, doing manly the ball things. Around. Oh, yeah. manly things. Yeah, yeah. well, we won't get to that far. Yeah. Listen, I'm going to introduce the show now. Maybe you'd like to give me a hand. Oh, great. Yeah, so. Coming to Playground, we've got Rock from Cork with Colin O'Callaghan. Do you like Rock, Father? Oh. Father's okay by me. Right, he's your only man, yeah. And then later on in the show, we've got a film which you might like to comment on. Yeah. It's all about chauvinism. Chauvinism. Oh. Sister Margaret, how are you? Let's right, get rid of him. OK, uh, rape is back in the news at the moment. Along with the Rap Against Rape record, the proceeds of which go towards the Rape Crisis Centre in Dublin, a new play has opened up in the city centre, up here in Dublin. It's called Vicky Singers, and it's all about rape and the effects it has on its victims. Now, during the week, we sent out four young people to see this play, Ficky Stingers. You see a picture over there on the screen. And uh, they're in the studio, and they're going to be chatting to Ray later on and telling us what they thought about it. And um, before we get to that, we're going to show you an excerpt from the play. Now, this part of the show is dedicated to the older teenagers. We deal with material which some younger viewers may find offensive. So if you find yourself in that bracket, if you are a younger viewer, please switch off now. The excerpt from the play we're about to show you contains some language which viewers may find offensive. So again, if you find yourself in that bracket if you think you will be offended by the language you're about to hear in the excerpt please please switch off now this part of the show is only for older teenagers right for the older teenagers who are watching we just <laughs> been raped and she's up in her bedroom with a boyfriend this is the place where the rape took place have a look at this we'll have a reaction afterwards he tries everything he knows he is holding my wrist so tight my hands lose their feeling I can feel the blood pumping between his legs. He thinks he is flattering me. I'm going to scream. Don't be stupid. And I realise that if I scream, his parents will come in. And then what can I do? They'll probably... I'm going to cry. He's softened his grip on me. Am I in the wrong? Triptease. I've had seven lovers in the past year. Two of them were virgins. Now he's crying chicken. When I was younger, I used to try and harden myself in my mind. Slice open friends in my mind. Bubble their skin, twist them under cars. Imagine my mother screaming like a circular saw. I thought I was so clever. But I don't need to tell you. Nothing prepares you for reality. Touch me. What do I do? He's too strong for me. He's not an especially big bloke, but still, I, I really don't know what to do. In the back of my mind is a feeling of guilt that, that I might offend him. And I suppose you just think he wouldn't dare. I don't know what to do. So I shut my eyes tight and do nothing. My parents are out. I burn my clothes. I watch them burn. I take a bottle of Dettol and I pour it into a scalding bath. I won't tell anyone, of course. I know him. I went to his room in the middle of the night. His parents were there. I can't prove anything. Anyway, they'll say it was my own fault. And I won't give him the pleasure of that secret admiration. And I won't have no policewoman poking around at me shouting, this is no virgin.
want to want to. I don't know what to do. Okay, well, that was an excerpt from Ficky Stingers. Now, you saw uh, one woman's reaction uh, to rape. I'm joined this year by Olive Braden from the Rape Crisis Centre. Olive, um, of all the rapes that take place, what percentage do you think are actually reported? Yeah, the vast majority are not reported. No. And of all the people who contact us, only about 30% report to the police. Mm -hmm. And the reason for that is that the victim usually knows uh, her assailant. And it's very difficult then to go to the police and report it. Right. So, I mean, look, I mean, it's not being reported. Rape must be one of the easiest crimes to get away with, is it? Well, yes. I mean, do it, people uh, don't go to jail, but I'm sure they suffer because mm -hmm. of it. OK, Olive, if you've been raped, um, what do you do? Yeah. Well, there are a number of options open. Uh, people can contact us. We have a 24-hour crisis line. They can go to the, in the Dublin area, they can go to the Sexual Assault Treatment Unit in the Rotunda, they can go to the police, uh, and best of all, uh, they can tell a friend or a family member and take up all the other options. Mm -hmm. So who would you recommend you go to initially? The first person you should go to, what would you think? Well, I, it would be really the best if they told somebody near and dear to them, mm -hmm. and they can help them, and then they would take up from there reported immediately or is it quite a time before they actually do get around to reporting them? Stranger rapes are usually reported immediately and reported to the police and the procedure goes on. Mm -hmm. But uh, many people don't tell anybody about it and that's a pity because there is help available. Right. Well, give me, what would be a typical reaction to a rape? Uh, many reactions. The most usual is that the victim would go into shock and she wouldn't know what was happening to her. Uh, she might uh, become very withdrawn, unable to remember the sequence leading up to the rape, uh, be unable to eat or sleep or think or work. Uh, some people then would try to cope and would appear on the outside to be reacting well to it and coping with it, but the underlying feeling would always be of devastation because it is the most traumatic thing that can happen to anybody. What's the worst thing you could possibly do? Uh, would be not to look for help and to try and cope alone. Right. We hear these things, I mean, uh, for example, one of the images is, uh, the, as I saw the girl in, in the clip there, wanted to go home, burn her clothes, wash herself. Is that a real no-no? Should you not yeah. do that? Well, it's a very normal reaction to an abnormal situation. Mm -hmm. um, they want to divest themselves of anything that reminds them of this uh, awful attack. Right. But if they're reporting to the police, they must keep the clothes they were wearing, right. and it's all needed for evidence. OK. Finally, um, how would you like to see women reacting to a rape? Ideally, what should they do? Well, I really couldn't give any instructions like that. I think people cope as best they can. But if everybody knew there was some place they could go for help, it would be make the whole affair much easier for them. OK. Well, one of the places you can ring for help is the Rape Crisis Centre. The number of the Rape Crisis Centre up here in Dublin is 614-911. See it on your screen right there, 614-911. It's a Dublin number, so if you're ringing from outside Dublin, put an 01 before that. OK, uh, we told you we sent four people off during the week into town to see the Ficky Stingers play. Ray is with those four people right now. Let's see what they have to say. I'm opposed to them. Pretty good, huh? Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. Ah, oh, there you are. Well, as Brian said earlier on, we went along to see Ficky Stingers, a play running in Andrews Lane Theatre here in Dublin city centre. The play tackles the issue of rape, and I think I can safely say we all find it a pretty devastating experience, right? Now, Linda, what was the central most important point you think the play was making? Well, I think the point the play was making was that rape isn't just a physical, sexual act, that it's really the violation of a person. And you see the girl, she was terrified. And then the results, she wasn't just physically scarred, but she was really badly emotionally scarred. Very good, very good. And Sophie, would you add anything to yeah, that? Yeah, um, well, fear was very prevalent in the play. It was portrayed very well. But they actually showed her that the girl who was raped was told her friends. And they didn't know how to react either. It was this whole aspect that they didn't know how to react. And yeah. she felt dirty and degraded. And her friends just left her alone. And she couldn't cope with that. Right. Yeah, good. Damien. As a man, did it make you feel uncomfortable being there? Well, I was very uncomfortable. Um, I sort of came, I came out of the play shocked at what I'd seen. The play was so, so abrupt and so to the point that um, I, don't know, I was just amazed at how well the point had come across. Um, it's 
oh, how frightening the experience was afterwards. And yeah. um, it's something I'd never really thought about. Just, uh, you know, if I'd heard it on the news and I'd sort of switched off, you know. But yeah. it has made me more aware now yeah. of uh, the problems, good. yeah. Very good. Yeah, I think a bit male or chauvinist. Do you? Yeah. I do. What do you think? Do you think that yeah, men are chauvinist? Yes. How about yourself? A lot of them are, yeah. You all think men are chauvinist? No, not all of them, but a lot of them are. Still, Irish men. <laughs> well, there you go. I see some of the women in the studio audience here think men are chauvinist. I don't know. Um, in the week that Mary Robinson has won the president's election, we all think it's a major breakthrough and a significant victory for women throughout Ireland. It seems that women have finally taken their place alongside men in Irish society. Or have they? Do Irish men think that women are their equals? Or is chauvinism alive and well and living in this country? Well, Donald Mockery decided to try and find out. Is chauvinism dead? They're all laughing at me behind me there. They're all the chauvinists in the background. Is chauvinism dead? Have we changed since the Ireland of the 50s? Have a look at this. Dono Mockery reports. How are you, Maura? God, those trams are a shagging nuisance. Packed it was. And me and me feet all day. Have you me dinner there? I am here in the oven, dear. I wasn't sure when to expect you. What are you talking about? And I home at five o'clock on the dot, Monday to Friday. True. But that's not to say you don't drop in for a quick one every now and again and arrive home somewhat later than expected. And don't be making a mountain out of a molehill woman now. What do you have for me dinner anyway? Rashers and sausages and a couple of spuds. Oh, you can't beat the spuds. See, Jem Fennigan was bad in the stadium last night. That'll be the end of boxing for him now. He'll be back to delivering coal first thing Monday morning. Again, he's been going on like that all day long. Well, for heaven's sake, will you quieten him down? Can't you see him trying to read me paper? Will you see to him? What are you talking about? When I go out to work, you stay at home and mind the kids and do the shopping and the washing up. Simple. When the baby starts crying, you take care of it. When I come home from work, you have me dinner on the table. Simple. When I'm finished dinner now, I think I might pop down to the pub for a quick one. I'll come with you, Sean. Me. My wife in a pub. Should they be calling you a brazen hussy woman? Sean, I was thinking about going back to work. Are you losing the run of yourself, woman? My wife, a mother, out working. Who'd have me dinner on the table? Who'd mind the kids during the day? Sure, you know the bishop disapproves of that sort of behaviour. I suppose. But it just doesn't seem fair. It's the fairest thing I know, Moira. Sure, it was good enough in me Father's Day, and it's good enough today. What's putting these queer notions into your head at all? I'm a great man for chatting up the women. Ah, oh, smashing. I always use my posh accent. I say, hello. I say, what's the difference between sex and conversation? I mean, he says, I don't know. I say, lie down. I want to have a word with you. <laughs> I was at a party a few weeks ago, and it was a fabulous girl there. Oh, fantastic. She was wearing a low-cut dress. The dressmaker was a dwarf. And around her neck, she had a necklace. And on the end of the necklace was a little aeroplane. And I was standing in my bingo stance, with his eyes down, look in. <laughs> and she looked up at me. She said, excuse me, are you admiring my aeroplane? I said, no, baby. <laughs> the landing field. <laughs> we are now in the modern and enlightened age of the 1990s. The age of equality is upon us, and women today have never had it so good. Today, women can go out and work for a living, or they can stay at home, as is always the case. But despite what women's rights has done, chauvinism is still here, and it looks like it's here to stay. Really, the main people in the women's lib movement are just some uh, mainly big, fat, ugly feminists who can't attract men, and that's their problem. The man's been on this earth like for millions of years, you know, and he's been the boss. It was okay before I got married, was it? It's very reasonable, but I've been straight and training and drama massively since. Male pubs, all pairs, no women allowed in. That's the best way to yeah, have the it. The lounge killed it, yeah. Ah, yeah, I had to get up and get my own breakfast this morning. Yeah. <laughs> that was a big change, you know. So the, the, your wife had that effect on you then, did she? Yeah, yeah my mother used to get it from me before. You know? <laughs> if women's lib was more um, geared towards accommodating males as well, well then it would probably the balance would probably be working off a lot better. So I can talk about my mother actually, <laughs> who 
through women's rights and all this has become a total pain in the, in the backside about it, I would say. You are sure? Most definitely. You are too alive and kicking. But we, we do, we do uh, appreciate women. Oh, yeah. Every home should have one. Definitely. They're only fit for kitchens and making beds and babies and everything. It's all women are fit for. Uh, do, you think, do you think you're a chauvinist? He, he's a farmer, probably. I know men have to uh, reserve themselves in their conversations when, when there are women around. Some women like the boys to be boys and not to mess around the place and just get down to the business. They don't like to be, you know, they don't like the whole idea of the new man. Talks all night and that does nothing, you know. Sort of cries himself to sleep. They don't, they don't, they don't particularly like that. So who's who's going like to stand up for men anyway? The bad news is that chauvinism is still rampant in the workplace. We know, for example, that most of the people who are secretaries in Irish offices are women. Over 90% of secretaries are women. And we know, for example, that 99% of apprentices uh, in Irish workplaces are men. That indicates the kind of attitudes people have as to what work men and women should be doing. So chauvinism is still rampant. Chauvinism still makes women secretaries and makes men mechanics. It's just a basic themselves rather than show their emotions to, fem to women or to anyone else. They keep their emotions much, very much more bottled up, That's are quite, totally, quite able to do so, while the women, in most cases, there are some exceptions of course, aren't. The place is at home. <laughs> it's, not, it's not out from work, it's not out telling people what to do, it's not out going for president. Do you think women should be at home? Please. I do indeed. And men go out and do the work? Exactly. Yeah, in the kitchen. It's the way of the world. It's been the way of the world for years. Why should it change now all of a sudden? Are you a chauvinist? I am indeed. Have you got a girlfriend? I do, yes. <laughs> does she know that she, do you think this way? I'm sure she doesn't, but like she does now. <laughs> tighten, tighten, tighten! No! No! <laughs> and then when Ronald Reagan arrived, they had the Ronald Reagan All-American Bra. One yank and it was off. We know that up to 1974 it was perfectly legal uh, to tell married women to leave their jobs as soon as they became married. So part of the reason why chauvinism is still rampant is that legislation is so recent, but people's attitudes are changing. And the reasons that people's attitudes are changing is that women will no longer put up with an attitude which says uh, your life is basically involves going to school, working for a couple of years and uh, uh, rearing a family after that. Do you think your daddy should do the dishes? No. no. Why? Because he's always at work. Do you think he should do the dishes? No. Why? Because it seems like a girl's job. Yeah, because mommy has to do everything. Yeah. Daddy does not want to sit around. He just takes the right. You with his feet over the chair. Yeah, look, looking at the football. My favourite was called the Tupperware bra. <laughs> it didn't lift or separate, but it kept what you had fresh. Jobs don't have genders. It's uh, people who put gender onto jobs. Um, sexism is alive and well and living in UCD. I'd like to take this opportunity, firstly, to offer a defense for Sid. Because sexism in college, to me, is a double-sided affair. If you cut me, do I not bleed? And if you look at me, do I not flirt? Women, not in, not in general, not all women, but certainly a large section of the, fe the female uh, liberation front now have become um, total militants and they're prepared to attack men on any issue whatsoever. Somebody has to stand up here and say that Sid the sexist is alive and well in college. That it's a catch-22 situation because when you give them what they want they say you're being patronizing and if you don't they say you're discriminating so you can't win either way. You can go on one way or the other you can say that men are superior, you can say that women are superior, but if you do that, you're going to lose. Fair enough if they want to work, that's fine. But if, you, if you're going to work, work. I mean, they come along then and they sort of go, oh yes, we have to take maternity leave now, and they shoot off for three or four months, and then they start taking career breaks, and you get people coming in, you know, uh, guys and, 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 and coming in, and they, they get sort of four, three or four months families. work. Yeah, they, they get three or four months going. work, and then, then they're, they're bunged out again, because your one has decided she's, it's, it's time to come back, you know? The secret must be to create a climate of discourse and to create a climate of harmony. And extremism, and most particular in this college, feminist extremism is doing as much as it can to prevent that process. If a woman goes out and gets a job, I say fair play to her. We're 
all doing the work that you're all doing and there doesn't seem to be any like problem there whatsoever. But everything from the discovery of electromagnetism to Stevenson's veritable rocket were the work of men rather than women, the exception being Marie Curie and of course she suffered physically for the discovery of radium with the kind of hidden footnote subtext whatever serves her bloody right. <laughs> You come up to me and you make the most crude comments I've ever heard in my life, <laughs> and true. I don't object, I laugh. Here you are saying that I get upset and I walk off. I've never done that. You're upset at the moment. I'm not upset. She's happy. She's yeah. happy. She's in ecstasy at the moment. <laughs> <laughs> well, really... For God's sake, it's the 1990s. You know, you're you not living back in the 30s when if you feel something, you don't say it just because, oh, well, you know, like sort of uh, people, did the next door neighbour wouldn't agree with that. You know, that's the way, that's the way this country has been living for the last 50 years. I mean, we're trying to, we're trying to get some progression here, you know? Too much in society and in college, we see faculties, we see subjects broken down in gender terms. That is why, ladies and gentlemen, this side of the house will conclude, very sadly, indeed, that uh, college, uh, SID, sexism, is, alas, too much alive in college today. The society has put up humorous posters, and these people coming down, they, they writ them down, they censored them. I mean, if you can just imagine a world without chauvinism, would this be the kind of utopia we could look forward to? This is a world. I'm in the kitchen, Sean. Hi, Maura. I just dropped the kids over to the McDermott's. The party should be over at about eight. Okay, I'll pick them up later. Great, yeah. Uh, I'm playing squash actually later with Martin. I've done the shopping. I'm making pizza for dinner. Gosh, thank God. I'd forgotten it was your turn to do shopping. So, how was your day? I'm quite tiring, actually. That's incredible, isn't it? The way there are cheaper insurances available for lady drivers at the moment. Annoying a lot of men, I think, but I suppose you can't argue with statistics. No, you'll always get a few whingers. I've got a dinner dance on Saturday. I'd really like you to come. Mm, that'd be great. I'd love to. I was talking to Jack today. He looked absolutely shattered. He'd been up all night with the baby. That's a bit much. Did Susan not give him a hand? Well, Jack said Susan's been working very late recently and she needed the extra sleep. Well, what's, what are you looking at? Your face is very dry. Did you forget to put on your moisturiser this morning? <laughs> yes, I did, and not for the first time either. I'll get the pizza ready and set the table. While you're doing that, I'll just go and change the oil in the car. Still exists? Yeah, I do. I think it still very much exists, but... I think that video gave a very one-sided view of it. I think that most of the sexism today is, is a lot of it has come from the women's point of view. It's the women who will bitch about a woman going back to the workplace. It's the men who feel threatened and who treat them as equals. You know, by, by being threatened, they're treating them as equals. It's the women who will bitch about them leaving their children behind. And I think that's, that's what's keeping the sexism alive as much as the men. Good point. Why would you think of that? Um, I think sexism... So I think sexism will all... Or, sorry, chauvinism will all of us exist. Yeah, I think we're programmed into it in school and through the media, what we see on television and that. And it's a lot of it's peer pressure in society. Yeah. It's reinforced by the women a lot as well. I agree with Louise. But normally if a bloke says that, he'd be lynched for it. He'd be labelled a sexist. Yeah. You know, it, the women would accept that. We have um, a equality on paper. Like the, the law of the country says that you know we're equal. And we're given all the choices. But it, there's an inbuilt thing in us all. There's um, an inherent thing in our systems. Like in primary school, it starts off in low babies. Boy is noisier than a girl, so he will get more attention. So the girls become quiet and submissive. Uh -huh. Well, um, like it's just been built into us. Like we have equality. We're given the choices. If we want to do engineering or labouring, we can do it. It's very difficult to take the choices. People Sorry. are. It's very difficult. People are afraid to take the decisions. Like a bloke is afraid to act equal to a girl, to show his feelings, or often to go against a group of men. And girls are often afraid to. Would, would you add anything? I would say that an awful lot of women trying to break down the barriers of chauvinism is done too harshly and at too fast a pace so that men feel afraid and they feel that they are being attacked and so they put up more barriers. I think it is changing but I think we're doing it at slightly too hard a punch sometimes. More modern approach to it I suppose. Yes, I suppose so. Yeah.
I think that very fear is, is breaking down the barriers of sexism because if they're feeling afraid, they're treating women as equals, they're treating them as something to be afraid of instead of seeing them as low females who, you know, nothing should be scared of. Would it not be better to do it slowly so that they gradually treat women as equals and like them rather than treating them as equals and being afraid of them? Okay, that's about it from XCR this week from myself and Ray and from everybody here in the studio audience from Usna, Daniel and Andrew. Goodbye, say goodbye lads. Goodbye. Very animated lads here all together. We'll see you at the same time next week here at XCR. Until then, have a good weekend. Enjoy yourself. Look after yourself. We're going to play it with George Harrison and got my mind set on you. See you next week.